don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today Hey everyone, uh, Connie here and welcome to my blind reaction to Volume 8, Chapter 3 of Ruby. Um, <laughs> last we left off, we met the Hound. The by far scariest Grim we've had so far. And, yeah. I mean, how, how are we supposed to top that? I, I mean, I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure it's going to be, but... Jeez. Um... So Oscar has been taken by the Hound, um, and is presumably on his way to Salem, but they are still being chased by the rest of our team there, who, uh, that team, I should say, because they did split up. Um, Yang, Ryan, and John, and all. Um, meanwhile, the other half of our group is sneaking back into Atlas using these tubes. Uh, that Nora shoots Weiss through <laughs> accidentally. Um, so that's interesting. Um, and they have a much bigger team because they have they have Ruby, they have Nora, they have Weiss, Blake, May Marigold, Penny. <laughs> so they have a much bigger team with them. Um, And it's funny to think about, like, you realize that only one member of Team Ruby is on the other side, is on the side chasing after the Hound right now, and that's Yang. Every other member is, on, is heading towards Atlas. Ruby, Blake, and Weiss. <laughs> Um, and if you want to count for Team Orange, if you want, again, if you do wish to call them that, um, two of them, Jean and Oscar, only went with Yang's side to even things out. They were both neutral in that, uh, debate, in that argument. Jean believed that they could do both, and Oscar was kind of on that wavelength, too. Um... So really, the only ones who actually were on the opposing side were Yang and Ren. And I stand by that Ren was expected. Because ever since Volume 7, he started to show some hints towards maybe turning in the wrong direction. I, I never thought he would, like, go full bad guy or anything like that, but he, he definitely seemed to be agreeing with some stuff that no one else was. Not even Yang at the time. Um, Yang is more of the big surprise here. Because Renz had been built up throughout all of Volume 7. But Yang, Yang in Volume 7 still stuck with Ruby's plans and ideas. And then suddenly she changes sides. And her entire reasoning is that Ruby's plans have not panned out. That they've not worked in their favor. Which, to be fair, is a completely stupid reason. <laughs> um, because their plans haven't worked out for them because of other people's interference. Not because the plans were bad. Not because Ruby wasn't wrong. So, and, and I know, I know, it's clear by the opening they're going to realign and work together again. But at the same time, it's just like, Yang is just entirely in the wrong here. Well, both her and uh, Ren. They're entirely in the wrong here. There's no getting past that. And when I was showing my sister the second episode and everything... Um, she was like saying, when I, when I said stuff like that, she was like saying like, 
uh, in your opinion, in your viewpoint and stuff. And it's like, yes, technically. But even the show is making it very clear that Ruby's side is the correct side here. Like, even the show has made it very clear that Ren and Yang are technically alone in their beliefs on this. Again, the only reason that, that anyone's even with them is because Oscar and Jahan, I, I presume the reason is that they didn't want them to go off alone with only two of them. Because <laughs> everyone else was against them. Everyone else chose Ruby's side. Jean and Oscar were the only neutral ones there. And mind you, Penny only chose Ruby's side, to be fair, uh, because she was needed in that situation. Like, like, she was needed to help get them in and everything. That was the stated reason, but still. We know that Penny would have probably chosen Ruby's side anyways. Um... Uh, Excuse me. Based on what we saw from her in Volume 7 prior to becoming the Maiden, as well as just the fact that Ruby currently is being there for her more than anyone else when she's having all these, like, troubles and mental uh, problems in regards to everything going on. Ruby's been the one to keep calming her down, so yeah, she's going to be probably with Ruby. <laughs> anyway, so it just, it, it just makes it even more apparent and clear by the writing, by the way everything is split up, that, again, Yang and Ren are in the wrong here. And hell, it was making that very clear in the, in the last volume, Volume 7. It was making it clear that Ren was in the wrong for the way he was acting and thinking. That he was the outlier. And I I've been re-watching through Volume 7 because of reactions and stuff. And I think it's very obvious that at least Winter is going to betray Ironwood. I know I'm kind of moving into a different topic here, but... Um, I think it's very clear here that Winter is going to betray Ironwood. Um, because in volume, in volume seven, there's this big plot point with her around, I think it's the middle of the volume, um, when they're invited to dinner and stuff. We see Winter start to lose her cool and everything. She get she snaps at Jacques, which only makes things worse, admittedly. Um, but then she has this conversation with Penny, and it's all about, like, the idea of, like, doing what's right rather than just following orders. And basically, Winter's saying, like, she should have just, like, followed orders. She should have just obeyed instead of, like, let out her emotions and everything. And then Penny's like, you're right, I don't understand and everything it's like because uh, almost a little not really sassy per se but almost a little bit because it's like she's kind of like trying to tell her something it's like letting out your emotions isn't a bad thing and letting your emotions speak for you isn't a bad thing as long as they're the right emotions and as long as they're telling you to do the right thing which in this case is the scenario and if they're showing you that the path you've taken is diametrically opposed to what's right, then something needs to be done. <laughs> and that's what's been going on. And, and at the beginning of this volume, we, we see it as well. When Ironwood shoots uh, the councilman, Councilman Slate, um, we see Winter's reaction. We saw it at the end of the last volume, the fact that she let everyone go instead of turning them in or trying to capture them still following the battle with Cinder and Penny gaining the maiden powers. The fact that she let them go, in fact, actually told them to go, it is already showing that she's turning against Ironwood. Because if she was 
if she was following Ironwood's orders there, she, she would not have let them go. Especially with Penny being the Winter Maiden. So I definitely think she, I think it's almost guaranteed she's going to betray Ironwood in this volume. It might be closer to the end. In fact, I'd say it most likely will, but it's going to happen. Now, the question is whether or not the Aesops will, because Harriet is clearly the most loyal of the Aesops. And even she showed, showed some issue with Ironwood killing Slate. Like, even she was uncomfortable with that. And I, I believe I posited my theory in one of the first couple re, uh, episode pre-thoughts and all, but I have this theory that everyone's going to leave Ironwood's side, that he's, he's just going to be left alone, everyone's going to betray him, um, everyone's going to turn on him uh, and do, to do what's right. And my theory was that that's when he's going to end up seeing the reality of the situation and maybe even sacrificing himself at that point. And I still do think he's possibly going to die. In fact, I think it's very probable that he's going to die. Not guaranteed, but I, I think it's very probable. Because honestly, at this point, I don't see how he could uh, make up for everything he's done otherwise. A noble final sacrifice like that is really the only way I can see him making up for everything he's done. So, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, now, final thing to say is that last episode also showed um, Crow, Robin, Jacques, and Watts in the cells together. Watts was taken away, presumably to be interrogated, since uh, since Ironwood's going to want all the information he can get. And Crow is telling Robin that they need to kill the person who put them there. Now, it, it, it changes over to Ironwood almost right away at that point, but I actually think he's talking about Tyrion. At least I hope he is, because it's like... Crow, I understand being angry at Ironwood, but at the same time, it's like, that's that's not necessarily okay. <sighs> Especially since, you know, Ironwood's at least trying to do what's right, even if he's failing hardcore at it. Um, he, he does believe that what he's doing is going to help all of humanity. He's just wrong. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that pans out. And Jacques, Jacques says that Whitley's going to uh, get him out of prison. I don't think that's going to happen because I, I, we've already had evidence that Whitley is not even entirely on his father's side. That he was manipulated too and that he's not happy about it. At least according to their mother. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I'm excited to see where this goes. I don't know really anything going forward. I, I do know what this episode is called. Um, because that is something I just happened to see in, uh, it, actually on YouTube this time. Um, it was something I happened to see on YouTube. I, I saw someone like post like, oh, this review is coming and this is what the episode is called. It's like, the review wasn't even out yet. It, it was like a one of those premiere things. And it's like, so it's like, this is coming, but it lists the name of the episode in the title. And it's like, R really? And, and the episode doesn't tell me much that's like surprising or anything, the episode title. It's like, it, it just references something that I already knew we were going to continue to touch on. So it's like, it's not a big surprise. It's not a big spoiler. Um, so yeah. Um, either way, I'm excited to get this started, so let's just do so. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black... Whew, excuse me. After it fades to black and it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts. It will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. 
And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So, yeah, Ironwood is definitely gone off the deep end. We knew that when he shot Councilman Slate, I mean. But this is even more evidence that he's just, he's becoming exactly what he's claiming to fight. He, he's becoming the evil that he's claiming to, try, to be trying to save Remnant from. I mean, I'm not saying that his actions here are as bad as Salem. Salem still holds, like, the top tier with that. But his actions here are definitely just unbelievably terrible. Like, not only is he trying to sacrifice an entire city of people for this ridiculous idea that it will help, by raising Atlas in the same way he was going to raise Amity Coliseum. But now he's working literally with the enemy, which is, I, I, I had heard multiple people talk about this and I did not think this was gonna happen. I, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt, admittedly. And I, I was thinking that he was going, that the reason they brought in Watts was that he was going to interrogate him to find out what he could about Salem, which makes sense as something he would do. But no, instead he's working with him, or having Watts work for him, technically. He is forcing Watts under threat of uh, basically death, because he has some, he has a bunch of guards pointed their guns at him at all times. Um, and he's uh, using him to basically continue along with things. Um, and because of it, they find out about the infiltration, and because of it, they're even able to use uh, his, uh, Watts's intelligence to do something that could cripple Penny and cause her or cause them to possibly override her, which would be excessively terrible for multiple reasons. And unfortunately, it might result in at some point during this volume. a battle with Penny, uh, our heroes taking on Penny because Penny's being controlled. As unfortunate as that sounds. Um, it's very possible at this point, I feel. Now, this episode covered entirely the infiltration. We didn't get to anything regarding the Hound and Oscar and all of that. Nothing with that was covered at all. This was entirely the infiltration. Um, and... There were some really funny moments. There were some really interesting uh, bits in it. Um, <laughs> excuse me. But the most uh, notable stuff was definitely um, Nora breaking through the door by channeling all the electricity and the battle between Penny and the Aesops. Now, the battle, let's start with the battle. The battle was very exciting because while it wasn't the entire Aesop's team because, you know, Clover's dead, um, it, was still getting to, it was still cool to get to see them fight again. And it's something that we expected, of course, to see. Um, but I didn't expect them to all be taking on Penny. And, and they almost won only because of Marrow Semblance. If they did not have Marrow Semblance, Honestly, they, I don't think they would have really stood a real chance. Like, yeah, they, they were able to knock Penny back a couple times. They were able to use their elite skill and training to fight back. But they never really had a chance against her if she truly went all out. I don't believe she was. I do not for a second believe she was going all out there. I, I believe that she was holding back because she didn't want to hurt them. Because as we covered in the last episode, um, she doesn't like it when friends fight. And she mentioned that they and Ironwood and Winter, they were friends with them. So I, I think she was holding back still. But the fact that she was holding back with the amount of power we did see her display is still insane because we saw her display quite a lot of power there. Um, but then we have Nora. So Nora can channel electricity. It's her semblance. We know this. Um, and, and they get locked into the room while Penny and the Aesops are fighting. 
and the door is electrically sealed. So Nora decides to channel all into herself in order to land a massive hit destroying the door. And it works. But she's never taken on that level of electricity before. And although it works, although it's successful, it takes a lot out of her and possibly actually injures her. Normally, electricity won't injure her. That's kind of the point. It's, it's one of the big uh, positives of her semblance. Remember, in volume five, I think it was, um, she mentioned that she unlocked her semblance by being struck by lightning one day and not dying. <laughs> so it's like electricity, even powerful electricity like lightning, doesn't really hurt her. But it's, it's the fact that she had to take on so much in one go right there that she had to actively pull in so much, more than she's ever done before, especially actively choosing to do. You saw the marks that appeared on her skin. It's like it, it's clearly hurt her to do that. And don't get me wrong, I think Nora will be fine in the long run. Um, but this is definitely a really big deal. The fact that that, that that did so much damage to her. The fact that it did damage to her in the first place. Um, but yeah, we saw that in the end, the only thing the Aesops could do was take one of Penny's blades and Watts presume, or Watts says, at least claims, that he can uh, control her with it. Um, he, he didn't say those exact words, but that's what he said. He paraphrased it. <laughs> um, and it's really bad for multiple reasons. Because if they get Penny on their side, then that's a big blow to our heroes. Because Penny is the Winter Maiden. If they get if they get Penny to their side and they succeed in getting the the uh, staff of creation and all, they they've pretty much won. Now the only thing I can think of is that um, we're going to have <laughs> probably we're going to have Penny taken over. Probably going to have a fight with Penny. Um. But I'm thinking that either Pietro's going to be able to hack her back, our heroes are going to be able to stop her, or, or the other option is that Watts is going to do his own thing, which would also be very bad. So, this, this volume is already off to a really intense start. Like, we're only three episodes in, and it's excessively intense. It's excessively scary. And I don't know what's going to happen. I honestly don't. This, this is going to be insane to see, like, how everything works out in the end. If it does. Like, the opening is pretty dark and pretty... uh tragic sounding so it's like maybe something big is going to happen in the same way that it did in volume three um maybe we're going to have like this big failure in a way i hope not of course but it's possible and i hate that it's possible but it is possible we'll have to see um either way this episode was it, it was fun it was funny but it was also intense and scary. So we're just going to kind of have to see where it pans out to. Um, next episode, we'll probably get more with the uh, Hound and all. I would assume at least. But in the meantime, tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode of Ruby Volume 8. And thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.